solid state video in this video i shall be discussing about the voids defects and some of the packings that we have not discussed earlier so let me begin with the simple packing that is one dimensional packing so in this the spheres will be arranged next to each other since it is one dimension to uh, the projection will be a circle so if i see from above what i will be getting is a circle so the circles will be arranged next to each other okay now this will be the side length let the radius be r the side length will be a so what is the relation between side length and radius c 2r this will be 2r that will be equal to a so r will be a by 2 now let's get to the next one that is two dimensional packing so what is special in it the layers the layers will be form of circles and these layers will be next to each other okay so place the layers next to each other since it is two dimensional the figure see just join the points the figure will be square so this is also known as square packing okay so now let's go to the next point which is if the side of the sphere is taken to be a then what is the relation between radius and a this will be a the radius is r so it will be 2r basically the length so a will be 2r r is equal to a by 2 okay so what is packing fraction packing fraction is area occupied by the spheres upon total area now what is the packing fraction we have to decide the first of all the area occupied now how to find the area occupied see if i take this uh, square here okay so you see that one this is this the another one is this this and this so basically you can see that i will be getting four quadrants of a circle so basically four quadrants if you place them next to each other we will be getting a full circle okay so i will be getting that circle and the radius is r so the area will be pi r square so the area occupied is pi r square now what is the total area total area that is area of the square so the total area is a square so what is the packing fraction it will be pi into now r and a are related by r is equal to a by 2 so a by 2 whole square by a square so the packing fraction will be pi by 4 now in this i have taken the layers parallel to each other and they are means fixed to each other now what happens when i place the layers like this it is two dimensions only okay so if i do like this next to each other see the difference first of all it was just below it the center was just below it but here the center is not below it okay now let me make one more layer for it so it will be like this okay now let me take any points that is the center of the circles you have to take okay so i have to find the packing fraction for it before that in this type of two dimensional packing i am getting hexagonal packing so you have to remember the difference the question can be based on square packing and hexagonal packing both of them okay so let's decide the packing fraction so packing fraction will be area that is occupied upon total area so first of all let me see what is the total uh, what is the area occupied so what is the area occupied see this is one part of a circle this is 120 degrees okay to make a complete circle how many how much degrees we require we require 360 degree okay so this is 120 this is 120 this is 120 so basically one circle is completed from these three circles okay this is 120 this is 120 this is 120 so basically one circle is completed from these three points one circle from these three points so how many circles i have got yet 1 plus 1 2 and moreover one full circle is also there so basically how much how much circles i am having three circles okay so now let's go to the next point which is finding the total area now how to find the total area of this hexagon since this is a regular hexagon let me take the center this radius uh, this will be r this will be r okay so now this is a parallelogram this figure this figure is a parallelogram this length will be 2r okay now what i do i take the a triangle here a b c okay i take this triangle a b c so if i draw it on side a b c what i see is that this length will be 2r this length will be 2r this length will be 2r so basically it is an equilateral triangle 
okay is that clear so the next point is how to find the area of equilateral triangle so area of equilateral triangle is equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 a square now what is a in this case see a will be a will be 2r this is r this is r this is a so a is equal to 2r so area total area basically total area will be 6 See, I'll be getting six equilateral triangles. So it will be six into area of one triangle root three by four into a. A is two r whole square. So this is the total area. Now, how to decide the area that is occupied? So area occupied is see this radius is r r. So basically, how many circles do I have? I have three circles. Okay. So three circles into area of one circle is pi r square. So 3 pi r square. So the packing fraction will be area occupied upon total area. Okay, so just visualize the things and use pure mathematics. Now let's go to the next point. Which is hexagonal close packing. And the most difficult in this chapter. So let me draw the diagram. So how it is. A hexagon. Then a triangle. Then a hexagon. Okay, let the height of this figure B H C the uh, atoms are placed at the corners at the six corners here at the corners of the triangle and here also okay so we if I place this will be one figure this is one full figure so on visualization we see that I can place one hexagon here also one hexagon close to this side one hexagon close to this side one hexagon above it see one I am placing adjacent 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 one close to it one close to it one above it so basically what is the contribution of a single corner here so contribution contribution of a corner in this case will be one by sixth one by sixth okay now in HCP the atoms are also present at the face centers so face center we know that this this face will be shared by two atoms so one will be one two cells that is one here and one will be above it so this will be shared by two atoms two cells so it will be contribution of a face center is equal to one by two so the first step is let us decide that how many atoms are present so the number of atoms will be half into see how many face centers do I have how many faces do I have actually 2 so that is 2 plus 1 by 6th into how many corners do I have 12 plus now see 3 full atoms are present inside this cell so the contribution from each of this atom will be 1 so 1 into 3 atoms so the total number of atoms will be 6 so this is the number of atoms now let's calculate the packing fraction so before calculating the packing fraction let me say that this length is a okay so i see that it will be like this r and r so 2r will be a implies r will be a by 2 so i find that i found out r in terms of a now using basic geometry and trigonometry i don't want to waste time on it so the height will be calculated to be 4r root 2 by root 3 now what is the packing fraction so the packing fraction will be volume occupied upon volume total so let me calculate the volume occupied how many atoms do I have 6 so 6 into what is the volume of one atom 4 by 3 pi r cube now what is the total volume here so for finding the total volume we can take the base area into height so what is the base area base area will be 6 into root 3 by 4 a square c the base will be formed of 6 equilateral triangles as we have done earlier so 6 equilateral triangles so base area will be this into height put h is equal to 4 r root 2 by root 3 here okay and uh, we can put um, a is equal to 2 r also see a is equal to 2 r so in calculating we get packing fraction to be 0.74 okay so just calculate it once so that you just don't need to cram it okay so now the next point is 
octahedral and tetrahedral voids so let me go to the octahedral voids first octahedral voids so how to decide an octahedral void first of all what is octahedral shape so one atom is here 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 and here and we can draw one atom to be here here so this can be written as four atoms in one plane one atom here one atom here okay so this this point is the octahedral void so this is the location of the octahedral void now how to define it in a cube so octahedral voids the octahedral voids are present at two places these are present at body center body center and edge center edge center so let me see for fcc what is the number of oct octahedral voids so these are present at the body center so the contribution of body center is 1 plus edge center the contribution of edge center is 1 by 4th so it will be 1 by 4th into how many edges do i have 12 so basically fcc i'll get 4 octahedral voids so now let's go to the next one which is tetrahedral voids so tetrahedral voids now first of all let's decide the location of the tetrahedral voids draw a cube okay now choose any of the corners which you like i will take for example this corner now take the diagonally opposite corner to it so the diagonally opposite corner will be this one take the another diagonally opposite corner to it so it will be this one now let's take another diagonally opposite corner to it so it will be this one so if you take another diagonally opposite corner to it so it will be this one so it will get repeated so the game is finished here only now the octahedral void will be at the center join these now we all know that this is the definition of the tetrahedral shape that is ta taught in hybridization so this is the tetrahedral void so tetrahedral void can be represented by this okay like this so this is the tetrahedral void now where is tetrahedral void present in a cube so it is present at it is present at center of mini cubes center of mini cubes now we know that one cube is equal to eight mini cubes so basically how many mini cubes i will have in a cube that is eight so how many body centers i will be getting in case of mini cubes in a cube that is eight body centers okay so in fcc i will be getting eight tetrahedral voids okay four octahedral voids eight tetrahedral voids so what is the important point here that is number of tetrahedral voids is equal to twice into number of octahedral voids okay so if i say that if the number of atoms is 200 now what is the number of atoms in fcc let's let's calculate that also number of atoms in fcc will be half into 6 that is half into number of faces plus uh, 1 by 8 into 8 that is 4 so i will see that the number of octahedral voids will be equal to the number of atoms that are present in fcc so if a question comes that if i have 200 atoms in a unit cell in fcc then what is the number of octahedral voids so number of octahedral voids will be 200 because the number of atoms is same as octahedral voids then what is the number of the tetrahedral voids that will be double so it will be 400 okay so now let's go to the defects so first of all let's discuss the short key defect short key defect now this defect is created when one positive ion and one negative ion so if i have let me take this thing if i have positive negative negative positive positive negative for example like this so the net charge was zero net charge was zero so if short key defect happens then one pair of plus and minus go away let me take this pair to go away so minus minus plus plus so minus plus goes away so what i see that net charge will be equal to zero so basically i mean to say that delta q will be zero means there will be no change in the initial and the final charge 
okay now what is the important point in it that when the positive and negative ions go there become holes so holes are created now let me decide the density changes or not since the number of atoms changes thus density changes as simple as that density changes but there is no change in charge that is the important point so now uh, let's go to the next and the last defect that is the Frenkel defect so what happens actually in it let me take this another let me show you with the help of basic examples plus minus minus plus minus etc like this I have if this defect happens like negative charge was here so it can go to any other place minus plus and this place will be left blank so basically only the position changes inside the uh, cell itself so what is what happens here does the density change no no change in density why because the number of atoms remain same so what is the proper definition of it this type of defect is created when an ion loses its correct lattice place that is this place and goes to the another interstitial side okay so due to this defect there will be no change in the number of atoms thus no change in the charge and thus no change in the density so this is the basic uh, defect and leave a like if you like the video and best of luck thank you